يقول راجع فوي رب سامعي محمد بن الجزاري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وكم تسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا أرحم الراحمين والله teach us what best of us increase us in knowledge in good morals and in good deeds يا رب العالمين we continue by Allah سبحانه وتعالى the blessings in explaining the jazariya منظومة المقدمة فيما يجب على قارئ القرآن أن يعلمه من نظم إمام الحفاظ وحجة القضاء محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن علي بن يوسف ابن الجزري رحمه الله تعالى. He was born 751 and passed away 833 after the migration of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So this is Jazariya 55. Last time we talked about the second compilation of the Quran, how Sayyidina Uthman رضي الله عنه along with the Sahaba, of course, who were in his time, particularly the committee that he formed of four Sahaba, who, who were they? Sayyidina Zayd bin Thabit, who was, who was an Ansari, means from the people of al Medina, right? Who else? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Zubayr, and Sayyidina Sa'id ibn Al-As, and Abdurrahman ibn Al-Harith ibn Hisham. These four people, they were the main members in that committee. There are some narrations that say he formed 12 member committee. A committee of 12 of the Sahaba. So again, this is a collective work, okay, led by Sayyidina Uthman. And the main pioneer was Sayyidina Zayd anhu, as he did in the time of the Prophet وسلم, he was the main uh, scribe of the Wahi, right? And in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and he was the main person who copied the, the prophetic uh, parchments into the scrolls. And those scrolls that were in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, they were written, they were scrolls. They were not a mushaf yet. They were not tied like as one piece. So those, this is why they called them suhuf. So when Sayyidina Uthman, as in Bukhari mentioned last time, he said, Arsiri, he said to Sayyidina Hafsa, send us the suhuf. Arsiri ilayna, a suhuf, the scrolls. Then in the time of Sayyidina Uthman, uh, maybe it might be in Sayyidina Abu Bakr's time they just tied those suhuf with it. But the, the words suggest that they were just scrolls, but organized scrolls, not like parchments and pieces of, of leather or skins or shoulder blades or tablet stones here and there. No, they were combined in organized pieces of leather and in one place. Then in the time of Sayyidina Uthman, as we mentioned, he made five or six copies and distributed them to the Muslim world. And we said, the problem was how to accommodate some of the qira'at of the Qur'an that the main rasm, rasm is the writing, the Qur'anic writing is called rasm. Now rasm in Syria, if you say rasm, it means drawing, drawing, just drawing or drawing. But in the Arabic language, rasm is what is uh, the writing, the Quranic writing. Okay, this is why if you open the Mus'haf, they say, "Kutiba bi Uthmani." It was written according to the Uthmani Rasm. So I would translate it according to the Uthmani script. To the Uthmani what script? Some people think Uthmani because the Khattab, the calligrapher, is Uthman Taha. The calligrapher who wrote these most common copies of the Quran, what's his name? Uthman Taha, a, a Syrian, Syrian calligrapher who lives in Saudi Arabia, who lived there for years. So he's the one who wrote with his hands most of the common copies of the Quran. Okay? Then of course they made copies of his writing, of his calligraphy. Open any Mus'haf you see, 
see in your Mus'haf Isa, the first page, read for us what does it say, and what does your copy say? And then in the, after that, what does it say, Isa? Let's show there on the on the camera, Isa. Bring it close to the camera. Show him uh, You see, al Uthman. What does that mean? By or according to the Uthmani script. Does it say Uthman Taha also, the, the calligrapher? Uh, yeah. Show him. Show him. What does it say? Read it. Um Katabahu or خطاتها خطات آه عثمان طه so the calligrapher is عثمان طه so some people think ah it's عثمان because عثمان طه there is no relation between the two just it's a coincidence that his name was عثمان right what about the تجويد كابي يا شيخ نجيب شو شو أس in the camera in the تجويد كابي read for us what does it say كتب على رواية حفص عن عاصم بالرسم العثماني، right؟ شو أس there and read it. says خط حروف خط حروفه كلمته خط حروفه حروف what read it خط حروف كلمته كلماته كلماته بالرسم العثماني. آه بالرسم العثماني. who continue Uthman Taha. Yeah, it says Uthman Taha. Uthman Taha. So he, what did he say here? They wrote it so that people don't mix. He said what, Ya Sheikh? Wrote his words according to the Uthmani script, the calligrapher Uthman Taha. Do you understand? Okay. So why they called it Uthmani script, guys? Because it is the one that was made in the time of Sayyidina Uthman and distributed to the to the lands, but in reality, he was famous for it, but in reality, you can say this is a Rasmin Nabawi, in reference to who? To a Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa And you can say this is a Rasm al-Siddiqi, in reference to who? Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Why? Because it's the same as we mentioned. As we mentioned, he said, send us the suhuf so that we do what? Nansakuha, so that we copy them. Got it? So, but why they made, uh, they said Rasm al Uthmani? Because Sayyidina Uthman made many copies and he, he let's say, uh, spread it in the Muslim lands. Did you get that? You got that? You have to understand. This is your book. This is the book that Allah blessed you to memorize. You have to know what every word means and, and uh, what a Rasm means, what al Uthman means, etc. So, now they came to the words as we as we mentioned al Rasm al Uthmani in the time of the Prophet وسلم, they were no harakat and no dots. And in that way, that Rasm, that same writing, which is the prophetic writing, the Siddiqi writing, the Uthmani writing, that same writing could be read in more than one way, right? But we said there are some qiraat that cannot be read in more than one way in that mushaf. So what did they do, Ya Shaykh? So Sayyidina Uthman عنه, with his great knowledge he and with his knowledge of the Qira'at of the different Qira'at of the Quran and with his knowledge of the Sahaba he included some of the Qira'at in some of those Masahih and he sent with every Qira'at with every Mus'haf he sent a Qari who knows that Qira'at well and he sent one to Sham, one to Basra, one to Kufa, one to Mecca, etc. Did you get it? So, for example, as we mentioned, the ayah, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ That, he wrote that in the Shami and, in the Shami and, the Madani, Masahif. In the Masahif, in the Mus'haf, that was sent to Sham, and in the Mus'haf, that was sent to where? To al Madina. Okay, to Al-Madinah. And this is why 
Now in the Qiraat, the term Qiraat, if you look at the Qiraat of the people of the Qurra of Medina and Sham, you find that they read it, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ But if you look at the other Masahib and the other Qiraat, all of them read it, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ Right? So that was the, the other Masahib. So this is an example. But for example, in some Qiraat, as we mentioned last time, if you remember, we mentioned Surah uh, Al-Buruj وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودُ ذُو الْعَرْشِ Majidu or Majidi It could be read two ways, right? We said that before, last class. Could be Majidu, could be Majidi. And that is, that accepts the two Qira'ah. Without, with the same word, it accepts the two Qira'ah. Hafs, for example, he reads it what? Dhu al-Arshi? Majidu. Right? Majidu. So Majidu will be an adjective for what? For, for al-Arsh or for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah. And in the other qiraat, it will be an adjective for who? For, for what? For al-Arsh. And in this way, we understand as if they are two ayat. As if they are two ayat. So al-Arsh is Majid, is glorious, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most glorious. Got it? Another example, just to give you more uh, idea. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. بَلْ هُوَ قُرْآنٌ مَجِيدٌ بَلْ هُوَ قُرْآنٌ مَجِيدٌ فِي لَوْحٍ فِي لَوْحٍ What is the haraka? Who knows? Mahfoo? Say. There are three options. Mahfoodun, Mahfoodun, Mahfoodun. Say one option. Mahfoodun. That doesn't work. Mahfoodun or Mahfoodun. So in Hafs, what does he read it? Huh? Huh? محفوظاً أو محفوظاً؟ محفوظاً في لوح محفوظاً Only نافع Who is the قارئ of what? What city? نافع مدينة Only نافع who is the قارئ of المدينة He read it محفوظاً Because this is how he learned it And this is why you see ورش and قانون They will read it what? محفوظاً Now what is the difference? بل هو قرآن مجيد. It's a glorious Quran. في لوح محفوظ in a in a preserved tablet. The preserved tablet. اللوح محفوظ. But في لوح محفوظ. It is preserved in a tablet. Did you get the difference? Two non-contradictory meanings. Two meanings that are not contradictory and both are valid and both are correct that's the one of the miraculous natures of the quran that you can read it in more than one way without contradiction and they give you they give you multiple meanings so as you mentioned this is the other aspect of the qiraat the qiraat are not only about dialects the qiraat are not only different dialects so sayyidina uthman anhu, he accommodated all of those qiraat in this way the Qira'at that are already accommodated, that already accept the... That already accept... Hold. You can hold it without drawing it. Yeah, turn it off. The Qira'at that accept... The, 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 that can be accommodated without any change, mm -hmm. he did. The ones that didn't, he what? He just included them in some... And as I mentioned, those words, they're... No more than 50 words out of how many words in the Quran? 77,000, approximately 77,000 words. There are only about 50 words. And the differences are very slight, sometimes like wa, sometimes without wa, sometimes just like adding the word and or, or adding a pronoun for emphasis like these ones. Got it? Khalas, no problem. Who said Bismillah on you? You said? You forgot. You said? You forgot. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. So, as we mentioned, now I'll give you, I'll give you what Imam, I'll give you, we talked about the last edition, right? Al-Arda al-Akhira, right? We talked about the, the, 
العرضة الأخيرة. We said سيدنا عثمان and زيد رضي الله عنهم. They were and Ibn Zubayr and Ibn Mas'ud and and Zayd bin Thabit and Ubay bin Ka'b, those great Sahaba, they were of the ones who witnessed Al-Ard Al-Akhira, which is the final version and the final edition of the Qur'an, in which the Prophet ﷺ reviewed the Qur'an twice with Sayyidina Jibreel. And he taught him, this ayah is abrogated, this ayah is not, and, uh, and at the same time, the Prophet ﷺ taught those Sahaba. So, that Uthmani Rasm, or that copy that was written in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and in the time of Sayyidina Uthman, it was the, the Quran that is literally from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any change, without any any uh, change from anybody. Sayyidina Zayd radiallahu anhu, of course, was a great Sahabi. He was a genius when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Al Madinah Munawwara. And you can read about the lives of the Qurra. I made a series in Raleigh about the lives of the Qurra. We did not complete it, but we made uh, the, the, about at least 40 talks about many of them. But inshallah, I'll continue the, this series when Allah wills. Uh, read about those and watch those, those episodes about those great Qurra and see their lives. Sayyidina Zayd, for example, he, the Rasulullah asked him وسلم, to learn the Syriac language, which is the language that the Jews used to speak uh, at that time, or some of them. And he learned it in 17 days, radiallahu In 17 days he learned the language. So he was a genius, Sayyidina Zayd bin Thabit, radiallahu uh, And he was the main person to, to uh, copy the Qur'an. Imam al-Nawawi, radiallahu anhu, says, Sayyidina Uthman was afraid from the differences that might lead to leaving some of the Qur'an or adding some to the Qur'an. So what did he do? He made copies of what he had, of what he got from Sayyidina Hafsa. And the Sahaba, by consensus, agreed on that. And he sent to the Muslim lands. And he commanded that every other copy has to be burnt. And that's what the, all the Sahaba did. And they all agreed. And Sayyidina Ali anhu said in the authentic narrations, if I was to be in charge, I would have done the same of what Uthman did, radiallahu Because some, always we have crazy people, every age, every time, even in the time of the Prophet وسلم, we have some people who are crazy, some people who are hypocrite. So in the time of Sayyidina Ahmad, some people said, ah, oh, he's the burner of the masahib. <laughs> he's the burner of the masahib. So Sayyidina Ali stood by him, and all of the Sahaba stood by Sayyidina Uthman's action, and they all praised him, and until now we sing Nasheed, and we say uh, Uthman, Jami' al-Qur'an, etc. We praise him for that, and he got this title, radiallahu anhu, basically for, for spreading that, again, huh? this is the, 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 the point, why it's Rasm Uthmani, it's Rasm Nabawi and Rasm Siddiq, but again, because he's the one, that's my understanding, because he's the one who spread it, who made the copies and spread it around. It was kept in the time of Sayyidina Umar, and, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar, etc. But he's the one who spread it and made copies. And you can say also, he's the one who also made some of those uh, copies in which he accommodated the, the other qira'at. Radiallahu anhu wa Allah. And Imam Bayyaki mentions this clearly. He said, Zayd copied what was compiled in the time of Abu Bakr by the direction of Uthman according to the rasm that was done in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's very clear and uh, understood. Now Imam Bukhari also narrates, this is another point just to show you, Sayyidina Uthman or the Sahaba can do nothing from their own mind. Never ever can they change, can, they can change nothing. Even the order of the surah of the Quran according to the majority of the Muslim scholars was by the Prophet Sallallahu teachings. Even the order of the surah of the Quran. Imam Bukhari narrated from Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubayr. He said, I said to Uthman bin Affan, you see this ayah, وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا وَصِيَّةً لِأَزْوَاجِهِمْ مَتَاعًا إِلَى الْحَوْلِ غَيْرَ إِخْرَاجٍ he said, نَسَخَتْهَا الْآيَةَ الْأُخْرَى This ayah was abrogated by the other ayah. Which ayah? وَالَّذِينَ يَتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَدَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا Who knows? 
يتربصن بأنفسهن أربعة أشهر وعشرة. He said this eye was broken by that eye. He said yes. He said why you didn't فلي ما تكتبها أو كذا ها. He said why you wrote it if this eye was abrogated means the ruling of this eye was already abrogated by another eye. He said يا ابن أخي my nephew this is how they talk to oh my nephew because he was younger than him. لا أغير شيء من مكاني. I can change nothing. I can change nothing from its place, even though it is abrogated in its ruling, but the Prophet ﷺ taught it to us in the final edition, the final review, so it's there. And I talked to you about abrogation, right, many times. Some ayat were abrogated in writing and in ruling, like stoning the, the adulterers. And some ayat, uh, no, so it's uh, Some ayat were abrogated in writing, but not in ruling like stoning the adulterers. It was an ayah, but it was abrogated in writing, but not in ruling. And some ayah in, uh, abrogated in writing and in ruling. And some of them, they were abrogated in writing, uh, uh, they were not abrogated in writing, but in ruling only, like this ayah. Did you get it? This is in the sciences of the Quran, you study abrogation, it's a, a long topic. So this is a clear, a clear hadith that what, that, uh, Sayyidina Uthman did nothing out of his own mind. Another hadith, this is more famous hadith. They, one of them asked him, why you didn't write Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? So writing Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it's there. It's there, right? In the Masahir. He said, why you didn't write Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim between Al-Anfal and Tawbah? Right? Right? Between Anfal and Tawbah. He said, لا أغير شيء من مكاني. I don't do from my own mind. I don't do from my own mind. So the point is, Sahaba رضي الله عنهم did nothing out of their own minds in regard with the copies of the Quran. Now, some scholars uh, in the past and now, and unfortunately now it's the more it's on the virtual world. In the internet, it's the most common opinion, unfortunately, because of the petrodollar school. But in reality, among the scholars of the Quran, that opinion is not acceptable. Which says that Sayyidina Uthman, he, he abrogated six of the seven ahruf to keep the Ummah united. And that, for me and for a huge number of the Quran scholars, it doesn't make sense. Why? Because, well, if you're thinking the Qira'at, where the reason because the the, um, the Sahaba or the, the, their students were uh, arguing, well, we have the Qira'at, still we have the Qira'at, we have 10 Qira'at with their 20 narrators, with their two ways, Shatibiya and Durra and Tayyiba, and also there's uh, they say also Turuq al and So, the Qira'at are still there with their dialects, with their differences, with their diver diverse ways of reading. So, that doesn't make sense. Number two, what are those seven, six Ahrav that he abrogated? They said he kept the Harf of Quraysh. We say in the first place, the scholars don't agree that the seven Ahrav means seven dialects. Because that's not right. And even if you say he kept the dialect of Quraysh, now if you look at the Qira'at, many of these Qira'at are not of the dialect of Quraysh. So I just gave you briefly that that opinion is not acceptable. Not, say, neither Sayyidina Uthman nor any Sahabi can abrogate anything of the Qur'an. And all of these, the seven Ahruf are there, and the Qira'at that we read are a result of those seven, of seven, of those seven Ahruf. Did you get that point? Now, so Sahaba radiallahu anhum never wanted to cancel any qira'at. And they cannot even do that. How come if you come to me and you tell me, no, no, don't read this way. Like if you, if you kill me, I'm not going to change that way. Because I'm going to tell you, this is how Rasulullah taught me. How do you want me to stop teaching this way? I'm not going to accept. You understand that? You understand that? Imagine 
the Prophet ﷺ himself, he taught you to read this way. And you're sure. And the Sahaba knows you. And know your memory and your authenticity and, and honesty and trustworthiness. Will you change? Will you accept to change? Even if the whole world gathers against you, gather against you, you will not accept. You will keep teaching the way the Prophet ﷺ taught you because you know it's the right way and it's from Allah. And you know it's at least one of the valid ways. So this is why... The problem was not in the qira'at. The problem was in the ignorance of some of the students. And that's, most of the times, that's the problem. You find two sheikhs, they're friends and they love each other. But you find their students, they're making animosities between them. But you find that two sheikhs have no problem with one another. So most of the time, the problems come from the ignorant students. Right? So... Sayyidina Uthman and the Sahaba did not cancel any Qira'ah. What they want, what they did is what? They referenced those Qira'at. They, what did they do? They referenced those Qira'at, right? They put the reference, Bismillah, Bismillah. They put the reference of those Qira'at. They combined the Qur'an. They spread the adopted copies so that if some people differ, okay, here you go. Look at the, what I'm reading complies with the master copy, with the authentic copy of the Quran that was copied from Sayyidina Abu Bakr's scrolls, that were copied from the Prophet Wasallam's manuscripts. Did you get that? So that's what he did, radiallahu anhu. He standardized the Quran. He uh, he spread the written reference among the, among the people. And now, no one can come and say, وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلْبَيْتِ And it's written لِلَّهِ Even if he claims, Oh, I learned this from this person, or the, we say, no, no, no. It must be any qira'ah. Now it became, and the, the, the scholars of the Qur'an made it a clear condition. One of the main conditions of any qira'ah to be accepted is it must comply with the Uthmani script. Which Uthmani script? With either of the six Uthmani copies. They call them Al-Masahif Al-A'imma. You know Imam? Imam is the leader. And those Masahif A'imma, plural. And the Mus'haf of Sayyidina Uthman is called Mus'haf Al-Imam. The Imam Mus'haf. And the other Masahif, and they call them al-a'imma because they're the same. So, any person brings any qira'ah, even if he claims he got it from whoever, if it doesn't comply with one of the Uthmani a'imma masahib, it's rejected. And that's what Imam Ibn al-Jazari mentioned radiallahu anhu clearly. That the conditions of the qira'ah to be accepted is what? It must comply with the one of the Uthmani a'imma masahib the main Uthmani copies that were made of the Siddiqi copies. And it must be mutawatir as well. You cannot come and uh, tell me, Allah, I read this uh, to only you read it. Only you, we don't take it. This is why they are, they say, Al-Qira'at Al-Arba'at Ashar, the 14 Qira'at. In addition to the 10, there are four Qira'at. You know those four Qira'at, they're authentic. They're authentic. Some people came like Hassan al-Basri, one of the great Tabi'een. One of the great students of Sahaba, but we don't accept his qira'ah. You know why? Even though it's authentic and we trust him, you know why? Because only few people. We did not get it through many chains. Did you get it? It must be mutawatir. There has to be a big number of people learned it, not only one person. And this should make you understand also when we say the qira'ah of Hafs. Doesn't mean only Hafs was reading this way. The whole city! The whole Iraq were reading this way. Huge numbers of people were reading the same way Hafs was reading. Then why are you saying Hafs? Because he was special. He was the special student who was dedicated to teaching that Qira'ah and spreading that Qira'ah or Riwai, that narration. Did you get that? So Sahaba radiallahu anhum wanted to make the reference available, the written reference of the Qur'an available among all people so that also they can make copies and no difference in the Qur'an. Now, still, the point is 
Those cubbies, did they have dots in that time? No dots. Did they have haraka? No haraka. Then how people will, will learn? Still, be, they were depending on the oral transmission, guys. Always keep this in your mind. Even with the making of the cubbies, still getting the Quran orally was inevitable. Is that the right word? Inevitable. Unescapable. Huh? Inevitable. 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 Right? Inevitable. Correct me. Don't be shy. Inevitable. Unescapable. Okay? You, you can say also indispensable. Is that also right? In this context? It's not correct? Okay. Inevitable. Unescapable. It's a must. Why? Because this word can be read in, in many ways. This could be lawhin mahfoud or lawhun mahfoudan or lawhun mahfoudan or lawhin mahfoudan. Many ways. Well, the Arabs will understand it can never be fi lawhun. Never. Because always the ism after fi is majroo. Can never, never be fi lawhun. Never, ever. But could be fi lawhin mahfoudan and could be fi lawhin mahfoudan. These are possible. Then how will we know? So this is how you have to get it from, from who? From a sheikh, from our, uh, a teacher who got it from another teacher who got it back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that clear guys? So those masahif were like references. And the main reliance was still on what? On the oral transmission. Now, as we mentioned, Some of the qiraat, like uh, Surah at tawbah Ayah 100, for example, the Ayah about the Sabiqun, وَعَدَّلَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Sayyiduna Uthman and Zayd and some other Sahaba, they learned it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ and this is why Sayyidina Rahman, and this is my understanding how he how that happened. And there's no other like there's no other way. It cannot be like chaotic. Just like he sent him, okay, let's put in the Mus'haf, we're gonna send to Mecca, let's put let's put Min. Okay, and uh, who's gonna go to Mecca and teach them this Mus'haf? Someone said, I will go, yalla go. Then just read what is there and teach. It doesn't work like this. Do you understand? It doesn't work like this. Sayyidina Rahman radiallahu anhu chose who? He chose Abdullah ibn Sa'ib radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Sa'ib radiallahu anhu. He sent him with the Makki Mus'haf to Mecca to teach the people. And of course there are many people in Mecca who also know the Quran. So in that copy that he sent with Abdullah ibn Sa'ib, he made, he wrote that ayah with Min. Because you know, he read it also with Min to the Prophet And Sayyidina Zayd, the same Sayyidina Ubay and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Sa'ib. He read to him and or to. So he sent him with that. And this is why now only the Makki Qurra, they read it min tahtiha al anhar. So you see Ibn Kathir al Makki, he read it min tahtiha al anhar. Where he got it from? From the Qari who came from there. And from the Makki Mus'haf. So if you if we get if we got to see the Makki Mus'haf, the Makki Uthmani Imam Mus'haf, we find min tahtiha. And if you look at all of the other masahib, you will not find min. You will find tahtaha. Did you get that? Tajri tahtaha al-anhar or tajri min tahtaha al-anhar. And also the scholars, they think why this and why this and they, they, they bring you some amazing explanations and amazing rich meanings for all. So Sayyidina Uthman, he sent Sayyidina Zayd, he told him to dedicate himself to teach the Quran in al Madina, And he sent Abdullah ibn Sa'id to Mecca. And he sent al mughira ibn Abi Shihab to Asham. And he sent Sayyidina Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami where to? You have to know this because he's the main narrator for Hafiz. Kufa. Because Hafiz is Kufi and Asim is Kufi and Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami was in Kufa and Sayyidina Ali was in Kufa. And Amir ibn Abd Qais to Al Basra. Now, if you look at the, if I show you again the, the chains of the ijazat of the Qurra, you will find Al Mughira ibn Abi Shihab is one of the main teachers of the Qurra of Sham. And you see Abdullah ibn Sa'ib 
one of the main teachers of the Quran of Mecca. So if you and if you try the chain of Hafiz, you will find that it goes Hafiz took from Asim Al Kufi took from who? Took from who? From Abu Abd Rahman Al Sulami who took from who? He is the one who took from Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ubay and Sayyidina Mas and and Sayyidina Ali and he is the one who who was sent with the Kufi Mushaf. Did you get it? So how, this is how Sayyidina Uthman did. And as you see, he sent like special people. He sent the people who were special in this, who were pioneers, who were excellent in that. And all Sahaba agreed with them, عنهم, And by consensus, Sahaba from that time, until now, guys, focus with me here. Because some non-Muslim researchers, researchers, and some non-Muslim enemies, they come to these points and they say, "Ah, oh, you see the difference. You see, uh, you see, you have different Quran." We say, we say, all Muslim denominations or sects, and all Muslim schools, Sunnis and non-Sunnis, they all agree to this Mus'haf that we have. They all agree to this Quran. They don't differ, and this is in itself is a great proof. In itself is one of the proofs that this Quran is the exact same one we got it from the Prophet وسلم, and, and even in the writing it didn't change from his time until this time and inshallah until the day of judgment. But if you look at other books or other scriptures, oh my god. Catholics have seven, seven or six, I forgot, seven extra books from other Christian denominations. Extra books, not extra letter, extra books. And these and the non Catholics themselves, well, you have King James Version and you have a new King James Version and you have modified new King James Version, etc. 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 You have so many copies. And I told you, I have many Bibles. I have two Bibles in Spanish, two or three in Spanish, and I have like five in English. And they, they are non-Catholic, all of them non-Catholic, okay? I did not get the Catholic one yet. In all of these Bibles, there are one of the more, one, not one, the only verse about Trinity, the only verse about Trinity, the first John chapter 5, verse 7, the first letter of John, not John, John has by gospel, there is the gospel according to John and there are la the letters of John at the end of the New Testament. The first John, chapter 5, verse 7. If Just go search it and you'll find. First John, chapter 5, verse 7. Look in these old Bibles, you'll find it. It's there in some Bibles and it's not in some Bibles. I have one of the Bibles from Britain and one and the others from America. You will find it in some of them, in some of them you will not find that verse. Which is the only verse in the whole Bible about Trinity. And that Bible tells you, it's not in any of the ancient manuscripts before the 12th century. So that, that when I showed these to some people there, they converted, they, they, they just left this book and they, they came to the truth. And they found the Quran to be the true book. And it is the only true book. We have to be very clear about this. No, no, no kidding, no compromise about this. No, uh, what do they say? Flattering or no? Mujamal, uh, yani mujamal. Yani ma fi mujamal yani. No flattery, flattering or no compromise or no. It's, it's very clear. So when you just get an idea like this about the other Muslims, you know the value of the Quran. You know. You know that we, even there are some letters that, that, are not, that are silent but are still there and it will stay there, it will stay there. Okay, so all Muslim denominations in this time, even though they disagree about the interpretation of some verses, okay, and, that is, and that's what Allah wanted, okay, in, in, in part of those verses, still they all agree on the, on the manuscript or on the, on the script that was written or that was copied by Sayyidina Uthman 
of man's community. Now what happened to those Masahid? Imam Ibn Kathir, he passed away, listen, 774. 774. Look, these people added a verse about Trinity because they couldn't solve the issue about, about how uh, Jesus uh, is, the, is God and he became a man and he's the son of God. And he, then he, they found the issue of like they are three and they take different roles and they inserted this idea anyway. When did they do that? What is the, the most ancient manuscript that has this? Imagine in the 14th century, imagine, like more than 1,000 years after Jesus, peace be upon him. For us, until, until this moment, we have the same, the same Quran that was written in the time of the Prophet We can generate it. We can write it right now. We know exactly, every, letter by letter. And I can explain this to you, inshallah, next time. Sayyidina uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, he passed away 774 after the migration of the Prophet. More than 700 years after the migration of the Prophet, he saw the Shami Mus'haf, which was sent by who? By who? The Shami Mus'haf was sent by who? By Sayyidina Uthman. Who did he send with him? al mughira ibn Abi Shihab. He taught Abdullah ibn Abi Shami. Who taught Hisham ibn Zakwan? Who taught his students, his students, his students, until this student learned from that blessed chain? Imam ibn Kathir says, Al Masahif al Uthmaniya al A'imma, the A'imma, Uthmani Masahif, the most famous among them today is the one in Sham. Sham is the Levant, is Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine in our time. It is in the, in the mosque of Damascus, at the pillar, at the corner. And it was before in Tabariya, in Palestine, now occupied by the Zionists. Then it was moved to Damascus in the year 518. And I saw him, I saw it. Who saw it? Imam Ibn Kathir. 700 years after the Prophet and it was still there. Even if it was not there, he mentioned, it doesn't matter. But it was there. And of course, the Muslims made countless copies of, of it. I saw it kitaban, azizan, a very uh, honorable, glorious, magnificent, great, huge book. Written with a very nice calligraphy, strong, with strong ink in a skin that I think it's from the camel's skin. And this must have remained as a pride for the, the Damascus people, the people of Damascus. And it was embraced in the Umayyad, Grand Umayyad Mosque until, there, until now it's there. Until there was a big fire that afflicted the mosque in the year 1310 of the Hijra. How old? How, how, how far is that? 1310. 131. About 100, 100 couple of years, right? About 130 years. That Mus'haf was there about 130 years ago. And now if you go to Damascus, near Al-Masjid Al-Umawi, uh, this is a place where I worked a lot, I worked for a couple of months, it's called Al-Hariqa. There's a big area there next to the Umayyad Mosque, it's called what? Al-Hariqa. Why the means the fire. So they named that area from that time. And there is a great doctor called Subhi Salih. He has a big and very famous and, and, and uh, widespread book. It's called Mabahith fi Ulum Quran. It's uh, topics in the sciences of the Quran. He says, Dr. Yusuf al Ish. He says, he's my colleague. He mentioned to me that Al-Qadi Abdul Muhsin al that one of the judges of Damascus, he told him that he saw the Shami Mus'haf before it was burnt. And it was preserved in a, in a wooden case. So just, just until like uh, 50 years ago, they, or 100 years ago, they saw the 
some of those people, they saw that, that Mus'haf and it was there. Still, as we mentioned, it doesn't matter. Now there are some of the other six Uthmani Masahif in some museums. Some scholars, they argue about their, the, that they are really of, the, of them or not, but that doesn't matter for us. Why? Because number one, we rely on the oral transmission. Number two, it's very common, very natural, very normal that they will vanish at the end of the time because they don't have the tools through which they can preserve the books like now. And number three, since they made those books just from the early times, the scholars of Islam made something through which we can generate any of those Uthmani Masahib anytime we want. And that's what we're going we're gonna to start from, inshallah, next time. Then we're going to finish this topic and we're going to move to the next line, inshallah, if Allah wills, in the, in the coming class. Sallallahu alayhi wa sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillah wa